Hi there, today I'm going to be talking all about packing your hospital bag and why, along with some helpful tips along the way. As a first time parent, it can be really challenging to work this out, so we've come up with a list of items that we've felt have worked really well for us as parents, and also some things we've researched to help you navigate this fun exercise of packing your hospital bag. It's a good idea to pack your hospital bag when you're around 35 weeks pregnant. You can do it a little bit earlier if you like. A lot of parents find um, this is an enjoyable task and say that this helps them feel more mentally prepared for what lies ahead. It's such an exciting time. So being organised, prepared is something that you can control, I guess, unlike much else that comes with uh, parenthood or babies. So um, this can help alleviate some stress and uncertainty during, I guess, this phase of your new journey in life, which is such an exciting time, but it can be overwhelming. So anything to alleviate some stress and uncertainty is something you want to try to help and support you with. It's a great idea to purchase neutral tones, even if you know if you're having a boy or a girl, because buying neutral means that you can pass it down from one child to the next um, and to other friends and family along the way. It's much easier to pair back with things. Choosing natural fibres such as organic cotton or wool is best and definitely the best choice for delicate newborn skin because it is also very breathable. Organic cotton is durable, resilient and by choosing I guess quality over quantity this is better for the environment, better for your baby um, and less wasteful and obviously with no chemicals used in its production of fibres pure baby clothing does last and last wash after wash and you're going to be knowing that you're choosing something that's good for your baby and great for the environment. It's also a great idea to consider purchasing a set of key 4-0 products for your hospital bag. This smaller size will ensure a snug, comfortable fit for the first four to six weeks of your little one's growth typically. That triple zero size is designed to last for up to three months, so it will swim on most newborn babies. That bigger size um, is generally way too big and there will be air pockets and make your little one feel cold if you choose that larger size. As most babies are born between three and four kilos, the average size of most newborns is typically between 3.3 to 3.5 or 3.7 kilos, which generally means that that 40 size, that newborn size, which is designed for babies up to four kilos, is perfect for most newborns. Another note to remember, of course, is every brand is a little different when it comes to sizing, so obviously check that out when you're purchasing items. Now let's go through the must-have items in your hospital bag for your little one. So you want to be thinking about having two singlets or singlets body suits per day. So I've got our traditional singlet here. Um, this is the first layer. So when dressing your baby, it's a good idea to consider too this rule of thumb. So for the first six to 12 months of little one's life, you'll be wanting to dress your baby in one to two extra cotton thin layers than what you're wearing yourself in that particular environment. Now that is a red nose or SIDS guideline and it really does help when thinking about how to layer up and dress your baby. So the traditional singlet's very basic, it's got no clips or anything, um, and they're great for all year round. You, of course, can dress your baby in a singlet in any season. So in winter, provides an extra layer of warmth, keeping the little one snug, and then in summer, absorbs the sweat, keeping them feeling more comfortable. And choosing um, singlets with a rib style, so ribbing meaning that, that the ribs go up and down, will hug the baby's body and keep them feeling really comfortable and will alleviate those air pockets as well. So that's something you want to consider there. And of course, we've got the bodysuit singlet, of course, which is great too. And the bodysuits don't ride up because obviously they've got the clips of the crutch there for easy access to the nappy. And then you've got the long sleeve bodysuit singlet for alternative during um, the cooler months. And this one's great again, it does have the clasp. It also has an envelope neckline for easy dressing. Um, and I guess it really does depend on when you want to be um, using these items, whether you're going to be using it at night time to dress your baby for sleep or whether you're going to be using them during the day. Of course, always thinking about keeping the torso and kidney area covered. So using something that comes down nice and low and all of our singlets are built in with extra length. So I guess one thing to consider is the particular, um, I guess the particular singlet that you're going to be purchasing. I personally prefer traditional singlets, these ones here at night because I have no press studs to align middle of the night. And then I prefer the singlet bodysuit um, or the long sleeve singlet bodysuit during the day because you're going to be wanting to prevent that riding up underneath the clothing. Hopefully you're picking your baby up more during the day, so then obviously it's going to stop that riding up. But really it just depends on what you prefer yourself. It's good, great to think about purchasing um, a combination of all those singlets and see what works best for you and what you prefer. 
You're sort of thinking about having one pair of booties and mittens per day that you're in hospital. So mittens obviously stop babies from scratching their faces. They are born with quite long fingernails. So considering to purchase those to protect them from themselves. And of course, booties for keeping little toes nice and warm and toasty. Then you wanna be thinking about having two grow suits per day and one sleep suit per night. So I'll take you through the grow suit first. Now, grow suits are great for the first 12 to 18 months of life. They go right up to size one and start right down at a five zero. And then the sleep suit is designed for the first three months of life, which I'll take you through in a moment. Now, both of these, the sleep suit and the grow suit, are extremely practical items and very user friendly. The grow suit is the most popular item by far though for new parents, because it is an all in one. And as we said, can be used for the first 12 to 18 months of life typically. It's highly functional, very quick and easy to change your baby. Has a dual zip, so you've got a zip from the bottom as well as a zip from the top. You also got the little um, safety cover to stop the baby's um, neck from getting scratched by the zip. And the double way zip just makes for such an easy changing. So when you want to access the nappy and change the nappy, you can just unzip from the bottom rather than having to undress the baby completely and expose the chest. So and obviously this will reduce the, the risk of having to um, align press studs in the middle of the night and align them incorrectly. Um, and that's typically quite challenging to do, I guess, middle of the night when there's low lighting and you're sleep deprived. Obviously it has built in feet to keep little toes toasty and warm and not have to worry about losing um, socks and booties and then built in mittens again to protect little ones from themselves and stop them from scratching. So this is probably the most functional piece you'll use for the first 12 to 18 months of life and definitely something you're wanting to have um, in your hospital bag. And then you've got the sleep suit, which I mentioned earlier. So this one is great because the sleep suit has the built-in mittens as well. You've also got this easy elastic at the bottom. So when you're wanting to access the nappy middle of the night, it's so easy. And then obviously when you're wanting to get that um, undress the baby or dress the baby, you can dress them from the bottom up with just bringing that up over the baby's body from the bottom or of course over the top of the head. So that's something you want to be looking at there. Now these just come in at two sizes. These come in a four zero size, which is that newborn size, and then a triple zero size, which is zero to three months. So these are great for all year round, but really great as well for those hotter months. If you want a bit of airflow, there is this panel of fabric that you can fold over at the bottom. And that just means that you're not getting that airflow up. But if, you, if you're worried about, I guess, nappy rash or your baby does get quite hot, you can leave that bottom panel open and there's extra lengths built in so little feet won't hang out the end. So this is such a great item. Definitely one to be taking your hospital bag for nighttime changing. You don't have to worry about any press studs to align, any zips. It is one of the most um, functional pieces, I would say. It's like a nighty for a newborn, I guess you can say, um, and just so functional and practical. And I guess when you're learning how to change the nappy middle of the night, you want to be alleviating any stress and doing it in that low lighting again, as we said. So thinking about changing the nappy without having to worry about anything else for the first few weeks of life and just getting them um, sort of changed and back to bed is what we want. Another thing you want to be thinking about too with the grow suit and the sleeper, particularly with the grow suit, if you're worried about the sizing, if you think that they're going to be, um, I guess, looking to move into that next size, you want to be thinking, okay, well, is it gaping around the neck? If it's gaping around the neck or their little toes are pushing through the end of the grow suit or their, their hands are pointing right out and you can't pull those little inbuilt mittens over, that's when you'd be thinking about moving up into the next size. So this one, I guess, is something that you want to be thinking about with sizing quite carefully um, and obviously if you can't do the zip up it's too tight as well so that's something to consider there and of course with the sleep suit their feet are coming right out the end it's gaping too much around the neck that's when you're looking at moving up to the next size so something to consider there so the next item is two to three hats depending on how many days you're in hospital for so hats of course there's a number of different hats to choose Babies lose most of the heat through the top of their head, so you're looking to put a baby um, a baby hat on from the, the moment they're born. They've come from a very warm and close space where all the temperature regulations have been done for them. And for the first 12 months of life, babies typically can't regulate the temperature very well, so it's really important then to keep them warm and comfortable. And it's always important to remove a hat though when the baby is sleeping, so the heat can escape through the top of their head because they do have an open fontanelle where that heat does escape. So when they're sleeping, it's really important to remove that hat because they're going to be covered with blankets, so the only way the heat can escape is through the face and through the top of the head. So always making sure you do remove the hat. This is our knot hat here, which is adjustable. You can undo this knot 
and then you can move it down and make a smaller hat, which is great. And then as they grow, you can obviously move that knot up. So these are great for air conditioned environments or just a temperate temperature. And then obviously babies born in winter, you want to be thinking about having a beanie potentially as well. Then we've got muslins on our list next, and muslin wraps are fabulous. Of course, the main use for a muslin wrap is to swaddle your baby, <laughs> but these have a number of other um, uses as well. So one to two of these, depending on what you're going to be using for swaddling in hospital. So these are very lightweight, breathable, dry in a couple of minutes, great all year round. They're quite large, 120 by 120. Um, they are recommended by Red Nose or Sids because they are so lightweight. They're great for a bit of shade when breastfeeding and you're out and about or just holding the baby. Also fabulous as a bit of a makeshift sheet. On a hot night, um, you might want to just put one of these over your baby in their sleep space instead of putting um, a traditional sort of sheet or blanket. Now next up is blankets, moving on to blankets. Um, now these are a great adjustable means, um, I guess, to be able to add a layer if your baby's a bit cool um, on those cooler nights. And of course they could be used in a bassinet, I guess cradle, any space you choose. And of course when you're out and about in the pram. We have a number of blankets to choose from, but you're choose, choosing to use again those natural fibres so that baby can, I guess, regulate the temperature more easily. And of course you can use them when you're out and about in the pram. When the car seat on the way home, you strap your baby and then slide a little blanket over to keep them nice and cosy and warm on the trip home from hospital. So that's something you want to consider as well. And as I said, there's so many beautiful blankets to choose from. So you've got to be thinking about choosing one that is, um, is maybe more lightweight and a heavier one for winter time. And then bunny rugs is the next one. So you want to be thinking about having one to two bunny rugs or cocoon wraps. Um, as another swaddling item. These are both be used for swaddling. I'll take you to the bunny rug first. So the bunny rug is an item that you want to be thinking about having for swaddling, of course, that is a maybe a makeshift change mat or also a bit of a burt cloth over your shoulder. These are nice and thick. These come in two sizes, an 80 by 80 for those tiny babies. And then of course, a bigger size of 100 by 110 for more longevity of use and for those bigger babies. It's really up to you what you choose to, to use. And then you've got the cocoon wrap and the cocoon wrap is great. This one, um, the bunny rug, sorry, can be used for the first sort of 12 months of life for all different reasons. And then the, the cocoon wrap is more designed for the first three months of life. So this one is just for the first three months. It has the three panels, the two sides, and then the bottom panel. This bottom panel comes up first and then you can actually pull that down to access the nappy middle of the night and check whether they need to have a change. And then to change them is super easy. So this, is, this requires no folding, the um, cocoon wrap. So it is perfect for that first little while when you're learning how to swaddle and wanting to change the nappy really easily middle of the night um, and for the first little while. So perfect items for swaddling. Then you've got one to two dressy outfits that you're going to be thinking about having. So the reason we say one to two is that one might become soiled. Um, ideally, you want to choose something that is obviously neutral if you can, because you can use it again, or if you know what you're having, you can choose a boy or a girl. I've just chosen one uh, couple here as examples. This one here is a little um, top and bottom set. So you've got the little bottom there, the velour, you've got a bodysuit, and then you've got a gorgeous little velour jacket. These are great for hospital photos, of course, at the momentous trip home from hospital. Bit of a keepsake item as well. So you're thinking about having a son that you're going to bring out when they're old and they can look back and see how tiny they were when they came home from hospital. Of course, adding um, a singlet underneath and you want to be adding probably a beanie and then some mittens and booties. Um, so that's, that's the perfect, I guess, combination of items you're going to be thinking about having. And ideally, you can use a cardigan as well. That's something you want to be thinking about as well. So a few additional things that I wanted just to mention as well that you might want to consider packing are bibs. So you're going to probably want at least two bibs per day from birth to use when you're feeding. This will help to eliminate extra washing or unnecessary washing for you. And these are great because they do have adjustable um, clips there, so adjustable press studs, depending on the size of the neck of the baby. Has terry toweling on the back, which means that can double as a face washer too, which is fabulous. Anything can double as something else is something we definitely want to have. So they're perfect as well. You definitely want to be thinking about anything that's going to eliminate some washing for you because I guess you have so much washing to do for the first little while that something like a bib can be a really practical essential item you pop in to just eliminate some of those things. So an extra cardigan for the winter months as well, as I mentioned cardigans before, so that could be part of your going home outfit 
or it could just be one you put in your hospital bag if you are having a baby in winter because we definitely want to be making sure our babies are kept nice and warm particularly in the torso area two muslin face washes are on the list as well um, as, as extra items you want to consider um, just for mopping up spills and of course bath time and then a hooded towel for making I guess easy drying when you're going to be doing bath time for your little one and then of course a, back, a pack of um, baby wipes as well because baby wipes are something that you're definitely going to use a lot of when you're changing nappies but also for all kinds of things as a parent you'll work out that baby wipes one of your best friends they get rid of lots of things so definitely something to consider there. And another note is when packing a hospital bag consider using a bag with wheels as this is much safer for your back and I guess your partner's back too depending on who's carrying the bag your hands can be full carrying your little bundle of joy and a lot of hospitals do have a no lift policy as you're departing the hospital so thinking about having a bag with wheels is another great tip there it's also a good idea to bring along some items that I guess are going to make your space feel more comfortable to assist you to relax and help during the labour period for pain relief and just things you might want to consider having um, to make that space really comfortable for you. So I guess a big tip here is you want to make this space feel as private, safe and relaxing as possible for you and your partner. So dimming the lights, um, choosing to close the blinds may be a great way to I guess make this space feel more relaxing for you and your partner when you are in hospital. So to set up your, I guess, your space that you're going to have for that labour period, it can be a great idea to think about having some personal items you might bring from home, so some comfort things, like, such as pillows, cushions, maybe your favourite blanket or throw, um, some headphones or uh, a portable speaker for music, to listen to podcasts, audiobooks or just music as we said. And might be a great idea as well as a bit of a tip there to create different playlists in advance so you've got them ready to go. Um, some activities to help you relax and pass the time, such as books and magazines or some apps or something can be a great idea too. An electric diffuser with some great essential oils if you like that. Maybe a TENS machine as well or a massage device that you've used previously that you've used and you've liked. Um, probably not the best time to try something new that you've never tried before during this period because you want to be thinking about things that you really like and you know are going to help you during this period. A stress ball instead of your partner's hand can be a great idea to use for a bit as well. Um, and maybe a stopwatch um, to time the contractions or use your smartphone of course for that. Um, some images to look at and remind you I guess of what you're about to achieve. Um, and to keep you focused during that time so some affirmation cards of some sort might be a great idea. Maybe meditation or mindfulness resources, either audio or printed um, for your partner to read out to you if you like or something like that. Another thing you want to be thinking about too is that you must travel home from hospital with a suitable infant car seat which is um, suitable for newborns and this needs to be rear facing and a capsule typically. Um, make sure you have this capsule correctly installed into your car in plenty of time before you have your baby. This is something that needs to be done in plenty of time. You need to consider and set that up and maybe make a time quite early on to get that fitted. I guess this is such an exciting time for you and your partner. And I guess um, it's a time that you'll always remember. So it's one of the biggest life events you'll ever encounter as a, as a parent, as a person really. Therefore, researching what, ho what your hospital offers before going in to have your baby is a great thing to think about too because there's lots of choices and options you might be offered there, but you wanna know what you're coming into going into having a baby. I guess if you were going on holiday, You'd look into the location, the amenities that that particular hotel or holiday location has to offer. So when you think about this huge momentous occasion of giving birth to your baby and bringing this new life into the world and something that's going to change your life forever, it's definitely worth looking into what that hospital has um, and the choice of items that they can give you and give, uh, I guess, give you and your partner to support you through this exciting milestone prior to heading in to give birth to your baby. Now I trust that you all enjoyed um, what I've covered here and enjoy packing your hospital bag and thinking about, I guess, that precious little bundle of joy that you're bringing home soon um, and I guess packing all those items that you're going to need for your little one and watching them be filled out over time um, and uh, holding your little one for the first time is a life-changing experience, that's for sure. So it's something so exciting when we're thinking about packing our hospital bag and how those little items will soon be filled with a little baby. <laughs>